Well, hi guys. Um, just let you know where I am with the uh, Thailand High Lift. Um, I've been doing a fair bit of work to it. It's not been easy, you know, trial and error really to uh, get everything in, you know. But that's what I like about these bills. You sort of you have to you make a bit and it don't fit, and you have to make it again. And sometimes you make it about four or five times till you're till you're happy with it. You know, it's not been as straightforward as the Tamiya 4 not Tamiya, the Clone 407 Bruiser Clone that was, that I did. But, you know, it's a totally different sort of truck. It's very narrow and, you know, it's hard to get stuff in. But I've been sort of potting along on my own way and uh, I've come up with this sort of setup. I mean, it's nowhere near sort of set in stone but this is what probably I'm gonna go with so I'll just take the body off and you can have a look it's taken quite a while to get to to this stage now as you can see we've kind of got everything between the rails now this is the two speed which I'm running here I just put this in neutral so this is the two speed which comes off clutch bell at the bottom. I think I've got an 18 and a 23 on there. And I think I've got a 37 and a 40 on the spur, on the two spurs for the two speed. But the problem I'm having is I need a cam set to go in there and they're kind of really scarce or very, very expensive. So I'm, I might have a go at making one of them, but the idea was, with this, was to keep everything sort of down low in the truck. So, you couldn't really go the Revo boxway because it needed to be wider and it would have been a hell of a job to get that in there and probably would have looked a right mess. Um, so, I told you about these little gearboxes. They are, these are the Kyosho QRC, I think they're called. And they came on some really basic kits back in the... 90s early 90s so you know but this little box has always intrigued me because i've got one in my beetle i've got a, a beetle i think it started off as a baja beetle the car show very uh sort of basic car i don't think it even had brakes on it but the gearbox is quite a trick little thing now you've got forward and reverse on that gearbox and you also got a neutral in the middle which makes it a very interesting sort of thing now, when they come with the uh, Kyosho, I think it was a Moon Eyes they did, and they did uh, a Phil Buggy and a few other cars with this uh, engine, the uh, gearbox configuration. Now, I built, uh, I think it was a Baja or Phil Baja Buggy, and I chopped out the very lame sort of Kyosho GT engine, and I put in... Um, an OS car engine, you know, the OS 26, it revs to a sort of 18, 20,000 on an open pipe. And I've been running and running that Beetle, and this gearbox takes whatever you throw at it. It is never, ever let me down, whatever. So I thought it'd be strong enough. This engine is sort of supposed to rev about 13, 13,500. I know it's got a bit more torque, you know, I mean, the, I think the... Converted aeroplane engine, the OS26 CX car engine is about 0.5, so this is about 0.85. Now, the sort of problems I had with this is I wanted to mount that gearbox low, and as you can see, it it's not. I've got the engine down kind of low as it can go. I've machined the flywheel down to get it in between the frames, but it was still a bit of a job to try and get that gearbox to sit down because I wanted the drive shafts not at too cute or angle and I also wanted you know the play up and down for the suspension to move in the prop shafts. Now the further you move this up you get less and less play in a prop shaft and it it makes it a stupid angle you know they're up too steep um, and it I couldn't get it to mesh. I was starting to think I could put it on the top and mesh it straight up to there, but it was impossible. So I thought, now I've got to 
have a think about this. And what I thought of, first of all, was putting the gearbox sort of here with a UJ coming down and onto it here. And I made it up and I, I hated it. It just looked horrible and it was a lot of friction there, you know, and it was just, uh, that was thrown away straight away. So what I come, the idea I actually came with was I've got the two speed on there and I've got kind of like another gear on here, which goes down to another gear. I can see it on there, hang on. There it is, see this gear here? So that, I think that's off a, a clutch bell when I do my Super Team, that was a large gear off the clutch bell. So this is kind of what I'm going with. So we've got the clutch bell, where are you? We've got the clutch bell, two speed, driving the two speed gearbox along to this sort of idler gear, which goes down to the input of the two speed, which is here. I've spaced it out with a couple of alley blocks, spaced that down, and I've kind of got a really nice, smooth, you know, transmission. So, if you can see on the top here, now this, that's reverse and that's forward. It clicks in, once the engine's running, you can see it just jump, jump in there. When it's going back, it runs in that way. And you can keep it like in neutral as well, which is quite fun. Um, I managed to, this part here with the brake on is off a Colt. I think it's off a Colt Mini. Um, it was a long part and I've cut it down and I've screwed it on to make it a support shaft. So we've got a support shaft for this gear here and it also had the brake on. So I made, this is a brake, so I made a longer shaft go right through, put the pin in it, drilled it for the pin, to put the hex gun on it. So now I've got the brake running off of this shaft here, which is uh, quite effective. So, you know, we've got the gearbox in, we've got the transmission, two speeds. I've got to get a cam for that. Uh, as you can see though, if I put it in, I'll show you how this works. All right, engine goes anti-clockwise, so this is going to go clockwise. So if you go forward here, uh, that's going to drive the car or the truck forward. Push that back to there, idle gear goes the same way, and it goes in reverse. So, And if you put that in the middle, obviously you've got a neutral. So. If you can see what I had to do, I had to make up like um, a gear carrier there and a gear carrier on the bottom here. That thread is 0 0.45 on that gear on the inside diameter. I had a hell of a job trying to find out what it was. Uh, my thread gauges only went up to, I think it was um, 05 and 04. So I thought to myself, they were so close. I thought to myself, on my lathe, I've got 045, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll go for that. And lucky enough, it screwed on lovely. Uh, whether I'm going to have to lock tight that, I don't know, because when I put the brake on, it might unscrew itself. I'm not sure, so that's another thing I've got to look at, but that's, you know, further down the line. Um, this part here is actually off a really early Kyosho RS2000. I've got a lot of bits and pieces laying around for them. And I made that bit onto a little plate there, and you can space that up and down to get the correct gear mesh on there. So if I do change the gears, because I'm not sure this is going to be high geared, because in my Beetle I've got this set up with that kind of clutch bell on it, the same number of teeth. And bearing in mind that engine rev to the 18, 20,000. It's fairly fast, but it's not like out of this world, but it'll pull wheelies and uh, it's a really fast, you know, fun car. Now this is only going to run to 13,500 revs. So it's not going to be very fast. Um, so I thought to myself, well, I, I want it a little bit quicker. So this is a big gear driving the small one. So obviously it's geared up. So we're going to come from that, you know, and it's going to gear that up a bit more. You know, I think it's going to be fairly fast without gearing. But if I don't like it, I can always swap this about and change it. 
I mean, I can order the spurs and the, um, the pinion gear, you know, whatever. The other, the other good thing with this as well is the original set, setup was if I was having this running sort of directly onto the two speed, it would have mean that the, it would have been going in reverse when it was in forward, if you know what I'm getting at. So I would have had to flip the axles around. I know a lot of people do that. But when you've got it going through a gear and then onto another gear, which goes down to the input of the gearbox, obviously it's going the right way. So that's a bit of a bonus there as well. And like I say, it's all lovely and smooth. Brake works perfectly. The gears are going to be fine. Um, the thing that might be a bit troublesome on it, it might be the same as my nitro bike. Remember when I had the trouble with it, it wouldn't change gear? And I might have to reverse the cam, make a reverse cam in there to actually hook on to this gear. I haven't really sort of studied it yet. I'm just trying to get the transmission together so I know where, where I am with it because I've got a lot of other stuff to do. But if you leave this half done in the middle, you forget where you're going. You've got to kind of come out here in the garage, get stuck in and keep at it. I mean, I've been out here till sort of 11 o'clock at night, a few nights. Oh, that's a bit sad, but once you start, you kind of want to just... Get everything moving. That's what I was looking for, to get that kind of all working like that. You know, and I'm quite happy with, with what I'll come up with. I think I might have to upgrade the springs a bit. I don't know. The tyres are sort of squidging. I can see them tyres. It's quite a weight, that engine. Um, but you know, that, that's where I'll, I'm sort of going at the moment. But I do like the way it's really narrow. You know, it's nice and slim. It's all in there. I think I will have to build some little radio trays to come out here to put the servos on because I'm probably going to run uh, an extra servo for the throttle, um, steering and brake. I think I'm going to have to have four servos in here, I think. Um, but I think I can get, you know, on the outside here, there may be a couple in there and a, a little battery in the back. Now, for the exhaust, I'm going to try and make something that sort of comes out of here. I mean, it's quite a nice little setup. I'm going to try and make something that comes out from here and goes down and along. Then I may split them up and have you know, one out each side like that. Or I might go to the back of the truck again and do what I did with the other one and make uh, dual pipes, twin pipes. I kind of, I've been there, done that, and I would like to just have two pipes come down here and even two sort of coming out I mean you've got to remember the body's going to be about here so they're going to be quite long to come out of there so and also if I have my servos on there they might be in a way so I might have to run down the side here or underneath you know I want to try and keep it above the gearbox um, and run the uh, exhaust like that I mean I was thinking of making I mean I suppose They've done this so you can slip something over the top of that, but I'm thinking of making up new pipes with that flange on it that actually come down. So instead of just having something sort of pushed on there, which I'm not a fan of, if I make new flanges uh, and a bigger diameter pipe, it can't get much bigger on there because of the starter motor, probably about another two mil. Obviously, the bigger you get these outlet pipes, the more performance you're going to get from these engines. So, yeah, that's, that's what I might do. I might go through, make bigger flanges, uh, bigger pipes and flanges to go on there and uh, see where we, we go from there. Now, the suspension, I don't think I'm going to run these shocks. You know, they're only friction shocks. Uh, they're, you know, they're quite stiff, don't really do a lot, so I might take them off. I've also got a lot of diffs on here, which I'm probably going to get rid of as well, but it's got a bit of articulation you know but it's not I just really don't like them shops so they're going to come out of there and probably put some more oil dampers in it so the other thing that happened to me the other night was I was just sitting on this table here and I was working on it and it actually rolled off the table yeah you guessed it straight onto the floor which is a drop of about two and a half foot and I didn't want to look because it landed upside down on the engine now, the, the, the only damage that it did was a little mark on this cam pulley here. But 
what it did do was it come down on here and it locked these two carbs up. So they held on with a little rub screw at the back there. But what it done, it come down on there, it was still rough on there, and it shunted the carburetor around at about 45 degrees. And I thought, oh God, that's it. You know, I'm gonna have to get a new carburetor. But what it actually done, it actually bent the screw that goes in there. So I managed to, 2.5 I think the screws are. So I managed to undo the screw. It was kind of like wonky coming out like that. And I got the screw out and it didn't look too bad. But whatever happened inside the carburetor, as it, the, the barrel was locked solid. So I think what it had done is landed and it had come down on this pin, which is the uh, idle screw. And it had come down on that pin and it had like shunted it into the barrel of the carburetor and it put like a big burr on it so I could not move it so I managed to take all this off and I put the part in my lathe and I managed to hold it and I managed to just sort of like move it slowly round like that and I managed to get the thing out get the barrel out and I could see there was a little burr there's a little slot in here where this screw goes in keeps it in place and also does your tick over speed now that was bent as well, so obviously that had burred up the actual barrel. So I've got a little diamond file and I just kept working it around and it started to go in. Then I got some, uh, I think it was 1200 wet and dry and I sort of lapped in the actual alley of the barrel of the carb and kept washing it out and blowing it out with, you know, carb cleaner and all that. And then I've managed to get it to work really smooth and it's actually better than it was before because you know, if you've got one of these carbs slightly off at an angle, it tightens up this this uh, bar on the top. I don't know how we're going to set up the uh, throttle linkage on that. I think I might be able to sort of, I want to keep it all down low. So I think I might be able to come down here low uh, and come back off of here. Put a longer bolt in there and put a rod through there. And I've seen some guys have made um, an air filter, which looks a uh, good set up. Well, it, coming off of these two intakes and they come along here so it's like a, a chamber obviously it's got to be fitted on with rubber mounts somehow so that keeps it you know you can't really i suppose you could have two filters but it's very close together they have to be very small but i think if you have one filter that feeds the two carbs and have it open air with some foaming and some galls i think that's going to be okay the wheels have got to go up they can't possibly touch the screws, you know, no matter. It locks out before you actually touch them screws, so they're safe. Uh, probably tank's going to be sort of round about here. Like I say, uh, I can move the brake around to where I want it. That's not a, a big deal. But I've got like three screws holding the engine in. You can see them there. This little support is for the support bearing on the top there. I've got the gearbox in there. I've got the supports for that. These are all Tamiya high lift parts in here. This is a this is all Tamiya high lift. Uh, and I think I'm gonna be able to sort of lower it a little bit and keep that body at a nice height. It won't have to be, you know, too high. Um, so that's where I am with that. Uh, it's not going too bad. I suppose the next thing I do is to sort of roughly sketch out where all the uh, tank and the servos are going to go and the push rods and things like that. But I've got another big job coming. I've got to rebuild a, an Aprilia 125. Um, I've got the engine, it's all been fully rebuilt. I've got the all the fairings and stuff are in my garage, not in the best condition, but my son's kind of lost interest in it. So I don't like to see it just sitting there. So I've got a bit of room in my garage, not a lot. But I'm going to have a go in my spare time doing a little bit here and there to see if I can get it back together again. So might be a couple of little vids on that, I don't know. I've also got the uh, YZ250. I've got all the radio in that. Uh, it's all kind of working. I've got the battery in there and everything like that. But really what it needs now is to come apart, all be locked tight together. And, you know, again, try and work out what I'm going to do, how to glue the tyres on and give it a run. You know, give it a, I'll do a start-up video if I can. 
um, and, and see how it's going to run. But, I mean, we've had, like, I think a whole weekend of rain here. There's just, like, a swamp everywhere. Not been able to do anything, really. But I'm looking forward to having a little run of that bike, but I think it might have to wait till next year, you know, springtime or something, when they... Because uh, I'm only going to run it on grass. It's too, like... I will not say delicate, but it, it's worth too much money to just try and scrape it up on a tarmac or something like that. So I'm looking forward to running that. I'm sort of quite looking forward to rebuilding my boys uh, Aprilia. No doubt there'll be lots of problems along the way with that. I mean, it, it's a bike that's had 17 owners in 17 years. So it's kind of was bought in a, a tea chest, a big box of bits, you know, and uh, we've got the engine built properly. Uh, so the rest of it, uh, it just needs to sort of go back together, cleaned up, painted up and, you know, stuff like that. So that's where we are now, guys, with this. Uh, I hope you like it. I'm quite pleased with the way it's going. Uh, it, you know, there's not, well, I hope I don't have loads of wires and stuff like that. You know, I want to keep it as scale as possible, as neat as possible, with no sort of loose wires. I don't want to run copper pipes through the car or anything like that. I want to run it as it should be and how it, you know, it should look. I think this engine, it should go quite well with it. I've seen it. It sounds quite nice. It's got a lot of, you know, a fair bit of talk, and uh, it should be another fun vehicle with all the lights on and stuff like that. So I'm going to sign out now, guys, and uh, keep safe, and I'll see you in the next one.